Good morning. My name is Jerry Markintel. I live in Tucson, Arizona. I am the inventor of a tool that I call the Tailstock Steady. And that's what it looks like. And what it does is it aids me in removing the tenons off of my pieces. I've had extremely good success. I have probably done upwards of 500 pieces so far. I've uh, gotten about 400 of them to the completion stage, or I have <clears throat> gotten about 400 of them that have come off the lathe and sitting on tables, uh, furniture, shelves, in a box, completed. No losses since the first uh, of the first 10 that I made after inventing this. I lost about two, maybe three, and too much pressure on one. Uh, one of them, it just, I went right through the bottom of it, so it has nothing to do with the tool. And then the other one, uh, I don't know exactly what happened, but it just flew apart on me. So it had nothing to do with this thing right here. Now, I say I'm the inventor of it. I am. Here's my patent number. The patent number is 93939, <clears throat> we're going to start over here, I can't read. Patent number is 9393655, issued to Jerry Markintel, Tucson, Arizona. So that verifies that I am uh, the owner, or not owner, but I have a patent. It's patented. So it's not something that I just made. No oh boy, it's gonna, uh, I'm gonna try to sell this to people, you know. No, it works. And it worked enough to make me spend, oh, about $6,000 for a patent. What it does is aids me in removing tenons off of my pieces. I can take the tenon off. I started off with a two and a quarter inch tenon on this piece. I took it down. Now, there is a way that I do this that's different than uh, probably pretty much all the other people out there. I also invented this thing that I call a chuck plate. This is what it looks like in its normal state. Uh, the new ones that I made, I put, I replaced this center screw with a, a smooth screw that uh, will not mess up uh, a hole that I use on my friction plates. But I use this for all my rough turnings. That can be a, a demo for another day. But right now I'm going to demo uh, my tailstock steady for a guy named Jack. He just bought one and he was talking about how, uh, asking how can you do something, or he was doing something and had some troubles. Uh, I have got techniques that will eliminate those problems, and he just you just have to kind of adhere to them, or develop your own, but use basically the same principle. The chuck plate is, uh, you, this chuck plate I use for roughing only. This chuck plate right here that you see on the uh, lathe is uh, strictly for removing tenons. I have another chuck plate here that I use. Well, this one right here was uh, made, <coughs> set up and used when I only had a 12 inch lathe. Now I have a 20, so I use bigger pieces. And I don't want to use this same little chuck plate, so I use this one. And there's no difference in it other than the configuration of the screws. This ensures that whenever I put my plate in here, it always goes back in the same holes every time. The only important hole that's really critical on these friction plates is the center hole. And, uh, oh crap, now I can't find one. <laughs> Let's start right here. Here we go. This is non-confusing. Non Here's what I do. This is confusing because I had this extra hole. At one time, I used the center hole <clears throat> drill exactly one quarter inch. No smaller, no larger. These holes around here, here, can be larger. 930 seconds up, if you want to drill it to a half inch, you can. It doesn't really matter because what it does is it drives this plate. <clears throat> Oops. If I put it in the right hole, it'll work. There. It's a driver. That's all it does. It makes this thing turn. So, what I've done is I've taken this screw right here, 
removed it from that hole right there, which would be that hole right there, and moved, put another hole up here, and done this. And that way, I'm not sitting around here trying to figure out which hole, uh, which way does it go, because everybody knows if you drill more than two holes, you, the third one is not going to be an exact fit. So you drill these outer holes larger, and uh, you try to put them in the same place at all times. So remove the one screw, put it up top, that offsets everything, it goes in like it's supposed to. So I use these friction plates, and uh, I've got a bunch of them. I've got, uh, I've got them as small as, well this is probably not the smallest, it's the same OD as my chuck plate. So four, this chuck plate's four and a quarter. So the smallest one will be four and a quarter. I go up to 19 and uh, three quarters. I've never had the opportunity to turn anything that large yet, but I use the plate anyway, because you can see grooves and steps in here, or I should say steps in here. You can just put all kinds of different pieces in here, and this plate can be used a, long, a lot of times. Now, what I have done is I have started doubling up on the plates because it's much better. What that does is uh, allows me to... Oh, where's my big one? I'll use this one. Here's my bigger one. That will allow me to uh, go down and uh, use this thing. I can probably get about 30, 40, 50 forms out of here before I have to toss it. Make another one. <coughs> That's if I'm careless. If I'm cautious, I can probably get a whole lot more. But I also do aluminite castings, and I glue up a bunch of MDF, and I, st I stack up my MDF. I'm trying to make this a presentable video. I stack up five pieces of MDF, and five times three quarters is uh, four and a quarter, or four and a half, or something. I don't know. I, I, my, my mind is not with me. But what it will do is let me <coughs> end up, when I cut this, I make these rings. There we go. I'll take this and I'll take my squares that are about eight and three quarters, nine inches, or something like that. And I'll turn, or I'll uh, set it up on the lathe. This is not the one, but set it up on the lathe and then I'll turn out that thing. And this is what I use. This is a piece of scrap. But since I do my turnings the way I do, uh, it is not scrap. I use this for my jam chucks, friction plates, rim chucks. Uh, let's see what else. Friction plates, jam chucks, rim, ch rim chucks, uh, and plugs in some cases. And when I call it a plug, I'm talking about taking a piece and, and say, we'll call this a plug right here. My plug is in here or I'll shape this to fit the inside of a natural edge. This particular one right here, I had to do a natural edge piece. Everybody knows natural edges are not flat so you can't index off of here to find your center with your dimple. So what I ended up doing was making this thing right here show how that works. Went in like so. <clears throat> I gotta move some pieces here. I said I'm gonna try to make a presentable video. It doesn't look that way. <clears throat> so I took my live center I call that my life center because I made that life center. I made 17 of them. So, took my life center, I put it in, and I measured across the top of this thing here to see what I had. Then I laid a board across here, and I measured all the way around. I stepped somewhere. I don't know if it's stepping off of this uh, ring right here or over here somewhere. But anyway, I got my dimensions. And I made this, and then after I got to where the OD of this would fit inside here, 
then I had to start working this right here. So what I ended up doing was turning that, and then once I got this made, I still had a tenon here that had to come off. So I pulled my tailstock back, put the piece in, and then I brought it up, caught my dimple, tightened it, took it down to where it's the same OD as my uh, nose of this live center. Turns out that's 5 8 I do not make any nubs anymore smaller than 5 8 because I've had too many of them give on me before I, 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 I was ready to uh, not have any pressure between centers. So after that got done, <coughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Okay, the live center <coughs> is still in place and the piece has got it down to a small nub. I'll take and I'll lower my tool rest. This particular banjo, I don't know if they're all like that. Whenever I tighten it down, it moves forward. So right here, it's got this thing stable. I, I wouldn't want to turn this because turn this because I would probably damage uh, down here. But hold that in place. Let's move this stuff right here, and then I'll get my tailstock steady. <coughs> and it doesn't matter which one you use because now all you have is a little 5 8 nub right there. This is one configuration of the tail stock steady. Uh, this is called, I call this the inboard uh, portion or the inboard uh, uh, <coughs> Configuration, there you go. The inboard configuration, and I call this one the outboard configuration. They are the same exact pieces right here. There's no difference in any of these. There's also this configuration right here. Same thing, no difference. It's just how I have the struts and the wheels turned on this one. So. They're all the same tool and you can get that and so far I have used just those three that I've shown you. That's the only ones I've ever used for removing the tenon on anything until one day, oops, oh, I got rid of my extensions. I sold my extensions or sent my extensions with uh, to Jack. Jack, you got my extensions. But that brought this out another half inch on each side, so another inch. Plus, I've got one inch right here. I needed that to do those rings, that, that ring thing that you saw. So that's why that was made. It's not necessary. I have done, uh, I think, my biggest piece so far is 16 inches. 16 inch piece that I have not, uh, I didn't have an issue with. As long as you've got your uh, wheels out here like you're supposed to, you got a large enough uh, plate to hold it, it's going to stay centered. <laughs> so anyway, what I do, I still have my nub on my piece. I've got that natural edge top that you saw. Take and I'll bring this up, pull this back to where it'll turn, and then go for it. Now it's, uh, it looks to me like it's a little bit on the warp side. The uh, uh, Jam chuck, rim chuck, uh, plug, uh, whatever, whatever you want to call this thing, it's spinning pretty true. It looks to me like it's spinning truer than it was when I put it in the first time. <laughs> so anyway, this is how I'll do my natural edges. Now, if I have a natural edge that is, that just comes out and it's a big bowl, then I will do the same thing except I will make one of these or take a future turning and we have, we all have them. Let's just say that this is a, a turning right here that I, I need to uh, finish one of these days and I haven't done it yet. And I wish I had one that I could uh, show. But I would take and fit the ID of the bowl to the OD of this. This hole, let's just say the hole's not there. Fit that, 
go ahead, bring up your natural edge with your live center. When you got your nub turned, bring up your, your banjo, lock it down to where it will keep that in place. Here's what happens when you uh, loosen it. You see it moving, it wants to come out. I don't know why this banjo does that. It's always done it, it's to my benefit, I love it. But it brings it in, locks it in, that secures my piece in place where it was when the live center was still in place. So I'll take my uh, uh, banjo or tailstock, start unscrewing the thing, put the, take the live center out, take this out, this is still steady, it hasn't moved. Just bring it back up, bring it in, there you are, ready to go. And it's still crooked. <laughs> it's warped is what it is. But that's as simple as that one gets. Now, essentially what this uh, jam chuck is all about, jam chuck plug, because I've got a center ID, center, uh, center piece, locating off that ID. And that's important because something goes wrong in here. Your piece is locked in up at the top, at the shoulders, and also at the neck, inside of the neck. It can't move. So that ensures that it's uh, secure <coughs> and even. Now, so you gotten so far on your bottom and you want to check the bottom. See how thick it is. Take it off. Grab whatever calipers you've got. If they'll work for you. Whoa. Oh, baby. <laughs> I never checked it before. This thing is about eighth inch thick. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the bolt, uh, piece is about a quarter. But anyway, you check your piece. Take, put it back in. As long as you've got your fits that are precise, nothing changes. So, that's as simple as that one gets. And I don't know how else I could explain this other than being there in person showing you how it works. That's it. Done. I'm going to do some more, but different ways of doing it.